exercise 2.1 will help us understand a few basic but important concepts. Well, given the expression of F0t here, what is F0t? F0t, it is a CDF, CDF of t0, and t0 is a random variable representing the future lifetime of someone who's right now h0. Now, given those concepts, in part A, we are going to calculate the probability that a newborn dies before age 60. An equivalence to the event that a newborn dies before age 60 is that the future lifetime of this newborn is less or equal to 60, right? So writing in terms of random variable, this is the event, and we want its probability. And this is exactly the definition of CDF, which is F0, 60. Now we can just simply plug in everything into this formula. So it is and this give us now in part B we want the probability that a life which is age 30 survives to at least age 70. So we want a survival probability. If we express this in terms of notation we learned in class, we want is the survival probability somebody right now is age 30 to survive at least another 40 years such that he can reach age 70, right? Now, how to calculate this? Because what we are given is the CDF for a newborn. How to calculate probability for somebody who's age 30? Here, we need to use an very important expression we learned in class. Because here, essentially, this is a conditional probability. It is the probability that somebody survive 70 years, given this person already survive 30 years. So writing this down, it is F0, 70 divided by F0, 30. And survival function is one subtract CDF. And we can again plug in the definition of F0 to calculate this. Generalizing this, we have this very important expression. This is F0 x plus t given this person survive x years. In part c, we want the probability that a life aged 20 dies between age 90 and 100. Writing this down, what we want is the probability somebody who is right now age 20 survive another 70 years to reach age 90, but this person cannot survive more than another 80 years. Now we can use the very important expression again. So this probability, it is F0 survive 90 divided by F0 survive 20. Subtract F0 survive 100 years given this person already survived 20 years. Now, both numerator and denominator, we can calculate using CDF again. And this gives us 0.1394. Part D is about force of mortality, which can be understood as the rate of mortality. So the force of mortality for HX is denoted as mu X, and it is related to the CDF and also survival function in the following way. So mu x is negative. You take the derivative of log s0 x 
with respect to x, or equivalently, now we need to calculate the force of mortality. Let's just use this formula. So it's negative one over s zero x. That's just one subtract x over one hundred and five to the power of one over five. And now about the derivative. And use the chain rule. Finally, if we plug in x equal to 50, then we can get our final answer 0 0.0036. In part E, we need to obtain the median of future lifetime at age 50. So, future lifetime. As we talk about, it is a random variable, right? And now we need to obtain the median of this random variable. What is a median? So for a random variable, if we have its distribution, median is a value such that the probability for this random variable smaller than this value is half and bigger than this value is also half. Now, if we denote the median of future lifetime as m and the future lifetime at age 50 is random variable t 50 summarizing what we just said the probability for t 50 less or equal to m is half which is also same as the probability of t 50 greater than or equal to m now, if we take a closer look at this probability, it is exactly S 50 M, right? And this is half. Based on this, we want to solve the value of M. And we can just expand this term using the very important formula. So this is S 0 50 plus M over as 0, 50. And if we expand, that's 1 subtract 50 plus m over 105 to the power of 1 over 5 divided by 1 subtract 50 over 105 to the power of 1 over 5. And this is half. Finally, by solving this, we can get m is part f is about life expectancy. So for somebody whose age x, their future lifetime is a random variable, and the expected value of this random variable is the life expectation. And this is how we denote that. And then we have the formula for this life expectation. So this is the probability of somebody age X survive another T year, which is SXT. They're the same thing. Now in this question, we want the life expectancy of somebody who's age 50. So according to this formula, it's from 0 to infinity p 50 t dt. And in this question, since we know the upper limit of the future lifetime is 105, and since this person is already 50, so the upper limit can be in this integration can be changed to 55. Okay, now in this integration, 0 to 55, to obtain this, again, the very important formula, we're just going to calculate as 0, 50 plus t over 
as 0, 50, dt. And this, the numerator is 1 subtract 50 plus t divided by 105 to the power of 1 over 5. And numerator, sorry, denominator, 1 subtract 50 over 105 to the power of 1 over 5 dt. And then by solving this integration, we get 45, 83. So in this question, what we calculated is the complete expectation of life, which is the expected value of this future lifetime. And in part G, what we want is called curtailed expectation of life. So the difference comes from here. For the future lifetime random variable, if we take the integer part of it, we denote by kx. So this is the integer part of the future lifetime, and the, which is also a random variable. If we take the expected value of this kx, this will give us the curtailed life expect, expectation, and we denote this by ex. And the formula for the curtailed expectation, instead of integration as we, what we did for the previous question, it is a summation k from 1 to infinity p x k. In this question, p 50 k, using the very important formula, it is 1 subtract k over 50 to the power of 1 over 5. So in this question, we want the curtailed expectation of life at age 50, which is E50. According to the formula, it is K from 1 to 54 PXK. Because starting from 55, the probability PXK, the above term become 0. So it is k from 1 to 54, 1 subtract k over 55 to the power of 1 over 5. And this is, okay, that's for 2.1.